So, hello everyone and welcome back. <gasps> Did I forget something? Uh, I'm sorry about that. Welcome back. I'm glad you're here and we've been having a great time. I think we have. I've really enjoyed doing these podcasts and I'm so glad your feedback that I'm getting. Many of you are encouraged. And so today I have a question for you. Why are you wearing that mask? Hmm, interesting question during these times that we're living in, isn't it? We're going to talk about that a little bit. So today it's a, I would say it's a little different podcast than we normally do. Um, at least I think so. It's a very practical podcast. Um, practical in terms of a spiritual sense and where we are right now, like uh, just growing in the Lord for many of us. And then on the other side, it's practical because it's what we're living in, in terms of reality of wearing these masks around the world. Everybody's wearing these. So Today is very common to wear a mask. Um, you know, if you're um, in, in any area that's enclosed for your health and your safety, they want you to wear a mask. Now, listen, I'm not saying yay or nay, whether you agree with it or you disagree with it. That's not what this is all about. But rule of thumb, if you're going to be indoors, you must wear a mask. Now, um, obviously, that depends state to state. And in New Jersey, indoors, you wear a mask. If you go to church, you walk in, you wear your mask. When you sit, you may take it off or lower it if you want, um, but then you get up, you must wear it, okay? These are the rules of the game that we're playing. And uh, now if we go outdoors, at least in New Jersey, again, every state is different. I can only speak for what I know here. If I go outside, I can take my mask off. So as soon as I get outside, oh, I whip that thing off. I got to get it off. I can't stand it. But then if I get too close to someone and we're going to be doing something outside, we're in a, in a close quarters, the rule is got to put the mask back on. You know, you got to stay socially distanced from everybody. Okay, we got the rules for this, right? Now, if you go to another state, the rules are different. Um, we have 50 states. We have plenty of countries around the world. Everywhere you go, it's different. My oldest two kids just went on a hiking trip. And in their mind, hiking is outdoors. It's in the woods, it's maybe in the mountains, wherever wherever they went. And um, all of a sudden they're hiking and they realized there's a hiker off, off in the distance and there was another hiker over there. And um, they were like, oh, we're okay. But they noticed those hikers had their mask on. So they were like, hmm, wonder what should we, what, what should we be doing? And he wanted to be compliant. It wasn't like he was trying to you know, go against the system or anything. And then they went a little further and there was another hiker off in the distance and they had their mask on. So they figured, I guess, in this state that we're in, masks are worn all the time. So they complied and they put their mask on. He didn't want to, you know, cause problems. But again, every place you go is different. So what do you feel like when you wear your mask? I, I don't like it. I feel like it's this thing on my face. I don't like it. Um, I feel awkward. I, I, I feel like I, I almost internalize my thoughts. I, I don't know how to explain it. Do you have weird feelings when you put it on? I do. But let's have a little fun, all right? The new thing is, if you can agree with me, you find a mask that matches your outfit. At least the girls do. So even all the, um, the stores are selling, like Walmart sells the two-pack and you can get a pink and a blue and you can get a floral and a stripe. And I've even seen some of the catalogs that sell clothing and they met, oh, here, you can get a blingy one for Christmas and you can get a, a matching Mr. and Mrs. for your wedding. I, it's almost become funny as to all the masks that you can get. So I have this one. This one is, let me see, this one I want to do first. This is a pretty one. So I can wear this. It's nice. It's pretty. It's floral, right? Pretty nice. Sort of, well, it doesn't match the stars, but it does match the blue. So if I wear my blue sweater. So this is floral. Then we have a darker one. Okay, so that one kind of blends in with anything that we're wearing. Then we have a silly one. Got to have silly, right? How's that? That looks pretty good. It changes, changes my whole look, doesn't it? All right, and then we have this one. So I don't know if the glare is on that or not. If, if you can still see me or not, but it's clear and uh, it's great. If you wear lipstick, they can still see your lipstick. Okay. So questions for you today. 
Why are you hiding behind your mask? Hmm. We have cloth masks and um, we have to wear these all the time. And But one of the things that I have found that um, when you put your mask on, you, at least for me, and I'm sure many of you, you tend to hold back. Um, I find that like when I'm in the store, when I first started wearing my mask, I didn't make eye contact as much with people as if my, when my mask is off. So in other words, I put it on and I tend to just go in the store and do my thing, but I don't I make eye contact anymore. I don't greet people the same way. You can't smile behind the mask. People can't see that smile. They can see the smile in your eyes, but they... You don't tend to, I think, connect with people on the same level. Maybe not say hello as often. Um, I've even gone to a store or two and seen people become uncourteous. And uh, for the lack of a better way of saying it, courteous, polite, kind, uh, being a fellow human being in the world that we live in that seems to have been put aside for some reason i think people feel when they have a piece of cloth on their face all rights go out the window as to what it is to be a human being to say hello to smile to greet to be courteous to be kind all those things don't seem to be there but whoa stop the presses wait a minute okay let's back up here so the people in the store can be rude and obnoxious and hit you with their cart and not say hello and not make eye contact and not be nice and just be rude, that's okay because that's not who my people are. Let's look in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. <clears throat> in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 33. No one after lighting a lamp puts it in the cellar or under a basket, but on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. Do you remember a Sunday school song? And, and some of you that are younger might not. Um, I don't even know if they sing Sunday school songs anymore. My kids are older now, but I remember being in Sunday school and singing hide it under a bushel no and we used to yell out no i'm gonna let it shine and you would circle your your light hide it under a bushel and you would yell no i'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine well that verse comes from luke uh chapter 11 verse 33. so in matthew 5 verse 16 it says let your light shine before others in luke 11 it says um, put it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. Okay, so now I'm talking to Christians here, okay? I'm talking to those that know the Lord and that have accepted him as their personal savior. What are we doing as Christians? What in the world are you and I doing? Okay, I know. Let's go back to Christmas last year, okay? Christmas 2019, the tree was up. We celebrated with family and friends. We maybe opened a gift or two. We brought cookies to people. We had a great Christmas. Boom, New Year, celebrated 2020. We're all excited, double digit, 2020, we're gonna do this. We start our year off, everything's good, and all of a sudden, a few weeks into it, it's like you're hearing rumors of, what's this thing, Corona, COVID, what do you call it? It's got this weird name, where's it coming from? What's it doing? All of a sudden, just like that, stop the presses, everything came to a halt. It was like dead silence. You could almost hear it over the whole earth. Stores closed. Doctor's offices now call you from your car to come into an, a visit. Schools closed, everything unplugged. It was like somebody went in your house and unplugged every appliance and the house was quiet. You could go to a store and it, I found that even during that time, you went into like Walmart or to a grocery store that normally the lights were bright and the music is playing. And now everybody had a mask on. You had to stand in line. They had to count how many went in the store. You went in the store, there's no music playing. To me, made it sound eerie. 
the lights seemed to be dimmer. Nobody looked at each other. Everybody, single file, went down this aisle, had to go up this way, back this way. Nothing's on the shelves. It was a weird time. But stop again. As believers, our hope comes in the Lord. It doesn't come in. Our hope is not in Walmart that we're going to find a can of chili on the shelf. Our hope is not that we go to the dollar store and hope to find a roll of paper towels or toilet paper. The Lord already tells us he will supply our needs. So I have a question for you as a Christian. What are you hiding from? Cloth mask or not, we need to be the light in the world. We, as believers, have Jesus Christ living in us. There are going to be days that are rough and tough. There are going to be days that you personally might be yourself or someone in your family dealing with COVID. You could be dealing with cancer. It doesn't have to be COVID. You could be de uh, dealing with a marriage situation, a kid situation, teenagers, um, maybe someone in addiction and you just don't know where to turn and, and that light feels dim. You know, you know the Lord's there, but you, you feel disconnected and you feel alone and you feel frightened. And, and you know all those verses, you start quoting them, I'm not to have fear and the Lord is with me and he's gone before me. And that light seems to be dim. I get it. I've been there many, many, many times myself. But there's still that glimmer. There's still that flickering flame that's still there. It hasn't gone out. It might be a little softer might not be as bright, but it's still flickering. And you know, my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, the only Bible some people will ever read is you. Not everybody has, I wish I had a Bible in front of me. Let's, let's grab this book. Let's pretend this is a Bible that they can open up to John 3, 16 and read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. They don't have a Bible to open up. They can't open up to John chapter 3, verse 16. They look at you as your neighbor, as a person that has claimed faith, that a person who says, you have to read this Bible. This is where truth is. And you preach to them, this is what you need to be doing. And all of a sudden you hit a roadblock, whether it was COVID or something else in your life that just put you in a halt moment in your life. And your flame started to get smaller and smaller but it still needs to flicker you still need to show that light if jesus christ is as real to you as you claim him to be if you are preaching to others that they need the lord in their life you need to show them why do they need the lord in their life when the rubber hits the road and you're going through a rough time in your life can the neighbor who has seen you go to church every sunday morning and read your Bible, maybe you walk around with your Bible proudly, or whatever, can they still see the Lord Jesus Christ? Can they see that light on that stand flickering? Can they still see Christ in your life? Or do they see someone that's completely given up, that has no hope and no assurance that anything good's going to come out of this? Listen, we know the end of the story. If you go to the book of Revelation, we know it. We know the end of the story. How many times have you read a book and as you're reading it, you want to go to the last chapter? Did he kill her or did the other guy kill her? And you read a murder mystery. You want to know what happened. But you're, as you're reading the book, you don't know because you haven't read the last chapter of the book. As believers, we know what the end of the story is. We know the end of our lives means glory forever and ever with our Lord Jesus Christ. Someday... I have a mansion in heaven. I don't own a mansion on the earth, and I don't know that I ever will. I don't have a street of gold that I can walk on. But I know when I get to heaven, I have a street of gold. I have a mansion. I have my Lord Jesus Christ waiting to greet me. I cannot wait to sit and chat with Noah and Jonah. I want to ask Jonah, what was it really like when you got tossed over and you were swallowed up by a large fish? I want to ask Noah, what was it like to build an ark when there was no rain? I want to talk to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and say, as a mom, what was that like? Can you fill me in? Now, this is my human thoughts. I know when we get to glory, that's a whole nother thing. But I can dream and I can just envision how awesome that's going to be. We know the end of the story. We know the Lord will come back and take his people home. 
before the tribulation. We know all that. But many of you as Christians are walking around as if we're walking through the tribulation. You're walking around as if there's no hope of God ever returning. How in the world are we to win people to Christ? How in the world are we supposed to be able to share the gospel with people when we can't even let our light shine before people? All right. So in Matthew and Luke, it says to shine your light. Listen, if you have to get a candle and put it on your kitchen table or on the counter by your sink or by your coffee pot, get up first thing in the morning to remind yourself you look at that candle. I challenge you to do that. Put something, write, it, write these Bible verses on a postcard and, and maybe stick it by your coffee pot or somewhere in the morning. Stick it on your toothbrush, whatever it takes. Stick it somewhere to remind yourself, let your light shine. This way, as you go through your day, those verses are just roaming in your head over and over and over. And no matter where you go, you go to the grocery store and you have this thing on, it's okay. You go somewhere else and, and all of a sudden you get bad news or you get uncomfortable news or you see something that makes you feel weirded out. It's okay. Let your light shine. It might not always be bright and people will understand that. But if they can look at their neighbor and say, you know what? Every Sunday they went to church for years and years and years. And now that they couldn't go to church the last couple months, I saw them inviting people in their home and watching it on TV. They, they watched church on TV on Sunday. They could have taken the day off. They didn't have to watch church. Now I see them going back to church because doors are opening and they're going back after all this. Don't they feel like they shouldn't be going as COVID could be lurking around the corners in church, but they're still going. I see them delivering food to that older lady down the street that she can't get out to the grocery store. You know what I saw them do? I, I saw them help someone with some woodworking that they needed done outside their home and, and they actually purchased the supplies themselves and went over and help the neighbor. Hmm. These are weird times right now and people are watching and are we reaching out? Are we doing a random act of kindness? Are we showing the love of Christ in practical ways? Are we bringing them food? Are we sharing maybe an overabundance of things that we have, whatever those things might be. Maybe you have an overabundance of time because you're not working because of COVID and you've been laid off or you can't work outside your home or whatever. Maybe you have time that you can share with someone. Maybe you have a talent or an ability that you can share with someone. If you go back to last week, we talked about the gift of hospitality, the last two weeks, and we talked the spiritual side, and then we talked about the practical side. Maybe you need to use your gift of hospitality. All right, well, let's see what else we wanna do. So I think, this is my personal opinion, this is not written in scripture. People are ripe for the picking right now. People are confused, they're hurt, they're weary, they're frightened. They don't know where to turn, they're hopeless. They're absolutely hopeless. If you watch your Facebook, if you're on Facebook, or even Instagram, or any of these social medias, and you look, you'll see how people are hopeless. You'll see the unbeliever making note after note after note. I'm not comfortable. I don't feel like there's hope. What's this world coming to? I don't wanna hear that as a Christian. And you people, people will say, what's this world coming to? The world is coming to where the Lord wants it to be. He wants the world to turn to him. If everything was peachy pie and wonderful, why would we want to turn to the Lord? People only tend to turn even as Christians when things are tough. So if the Lord is making it tough, it's going to make the unbeliever to look for hope. And that's exactly one of the things he's doing. All right. So did you share the gospel with anyone today? Did you share the gospel with anyone this week? Did you share the gospel with anyone this year? Have you ever shared the gospel with anyone? So, like I said, we tend to hide behind the mask. So I'm asking you, why are you wearing that mask? So let's just kind of look at the Christian life real quick as we're ending this. All right, so we could have this mask. See this? This mask to me represents it's a neutral color, it kind of blends with everything. Are you a neutral Christian? Do you find that you can hide behind the mask of who you are because you're neutral and you can kind of get in there a little bit and get out of there a little bit and nobody even knows that you're there? Hmm, interesting. All right, 
Or are you this Christian here? Always laughing, always joking, always making fun of things. Maybe even making fun of the things of the Lord or scripture. Maybe making fun of another Christian. Oh, you're doing that again. Oh, you're serving. Oh, you're preaching and joking. What are you hiding behind when you joke? What are you hiding behind when you feel like you need to be neutral? Then we have something pretty like this, real floral. And sometimes we get very flowery with our language and, and we want to look better than the next person. So are you trying to like be better than me, be better than him, be better than her? Um, that's not what the Lord has caused us to do. We are to edify, to build each other up, to encourage one another. We are to make the next person better than we are. We don't encourage that. Are you trying to make yourself look better? I call this mask the slip and slide. So, you know, you're going somewhere. Let's see, is it safe? Do I have to cover up? Do I have to put my mask on? You can, you can check it out. You can assess what's going on. And if it's safe, you can slide it off and you can take your mask down a little bit. Or maybe you wear a mask like this. And you can, uh, you, hey, you can see who I am. You can see me. You can tell what color eyeshadow I'm wearing, what color my eyes are, what lipstick I'm wearing, but yet it's a mask. Are you hiding? behind a mask. I'm going to ask you, there's many masks that we wear as people, as a human being, that we tend to hide behind. We're frightened to share who we are. We're frightened we're going to get hurt. We're frightened that someone will make fun of us. We're frightened that somebody will call us out. Are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? I do uh, something outside of work, um, a social media thing that I do, and I had shared my testimony on it and somebody came back and said to me, grow up, Lynn Wilson. Gods are myths. You're just being foolish. And my heart sank for that people, that person, people like that, that believe that God is a myth. The day before they stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, he will no longer be a myth to them. They will know. So I'm asking you again, what mask are you hiding behind? Our light should be shining. I'm not saying life is perfect. As a Christian, you're going to walk and you're going to stumble and fall and get hurt. And you got to pick yourself up, but your light should be shining. Why are we hiding behind making ourselves better than others, making fun of things, trying to stay neutral, kind of finding out where we can fit in and where we can't, or trying to pretend that people can see us, but behind that, there's really still a mask on you. Let yourself be real. Let Jesus Christ shine through you. Use Luke and use Matthew today. Write those verses down. Study those verses. Maybe even look up more verses on what should we be doing to let our light shine and to take that mask off. Why are you wearing your mask? I have a question for you today. I have four questions and we're closing. Do you need to get saved today? Do you not know the end of the story? Do you not know that there's security in eternal life? If you don't, today's the day you need to set it right with the Lord. Are you wearing a mask and are you hiding behind something? Maybe today you need to make it right. What's causing you to be hide behind these masks? There might be something that you just need to say, you know what, I'm done with this. Just like when I go outside and I don't have to wear it, I rip that thing off. Maybe you need to rip whatever mask is on you and get it off and start serving the Lord. And does your light need to shine again? Is it hiding under a bushel? Is it behind, hiding behind a mask? Do you need to let your light shine today? Thank you so much for joining me with this podcast. I'm glad you're here. I'm trusting that the Lord is working through your life. You're going to just see God working through this week, and we will catch you next week on the next podcast uh, with Lynn Wilson. Hope for today. Thank you so much.